This 16 year old was sentenced to 50 years in prison and you won't believe what he did. In 2022, Noah Nay shot a five year old girl in the neck and shoulder in Oklahoma. This teen who I swear looks like a nine year old was riding in a stolen car and purposely shot inside a home where the little girl was playing. But again, this was no accident. No one did this for a gang initiation. Luckily, the little girl survived, but had the bullet hit a spot an inch away, she would have definitely died. Noah was arrested, but not long after he escaped the juvenile detention center by jumping a fence. He was found four days later, but when he was put back into the detention center, he repeatedly assaulted staff. Noah was sentenced as an adult, but the judge said that in 2028, his sentence can be reduced if he's proved that he's changed. Imagine getting stood up for a day and it causes you to become a key part of a murder trial. It was 2012 in Kentucky and Shayna Hubers was 21 years old. She had just graduated from the University of Kentucky and was dating 29-year-old Ryan Poston. Ryan was an attorney and the pair were said to be very toxic. They'd been together for about a year and a half but were very on and off. On the night of October the 12th, things would end for good. Those close to Ryan knew he wasn't happy. He tried ending things with Shayna multiple times, but she refused to accept this. She would turn up to his house, refuse to leave, and they would end up getting back together. On the 12th of October, the pair were having food at Ryan's parents' house, and they would end up in another argument. Ryan decided to end things once and for all, and to prove to Shayna that he was over her, he decided to go on a date with another woman the next night. The woman was the stunning Audrey Bolt, who was the current Miss Ohio. Audrey and Ryan had arranged to go to a bar the night after at 9.30pm. Audrey was really looking forward to it and was very confused when he never showed up. Meanwhile, Shayna had turned up to Ryan's house again without warning. After another massive argument, she took one of his guns and shot him at six times. She then decided to call police to confess. Now, while she was being interviewed by police, she was acting incredibly bizarre. She twirled around the room and sang, I did it, yeah, I killed him. She also sang Amazing Grace. Shayna tried to claim that she acted in self-defense, but she was found guilty of murder and sentenced to 40 years in prison. Audrey had to testify in the murder trial. However, in August 2016, Shayna was actually granted a new trial. This was because it was revealed that one of the original jurors was actually a felon. She was again found guilty, though, in her retrial and was sentenced to life. The baby-faced gangster that shot a little girl in the neck has been jailed for 50 years after a court heard that he knows the difference between right and wrong, but has no amenability to treatment. Noah Ney was sentenced as an adult for the 2022 shooting that saw the teen drive a stolen car and fire a gun towards the house in which the little girl was playing, hitting her in the neck and shoulder. It has been reported that his actions were part of the requirements for a gang initiation. An American couple married for 75 years. They had one wish in common, a wish that shocked everyone. Jeanette, 96, and Alexander, 95. They started dating at the age of eight, were officially married in 1940, and live in San Diego, Calif. They have five sons and daughters and 16 grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Some time ago, Alexander suffered an accidental fall that fractured his hip, and he was confined to his bed at home. He used a special bed. It was placed next to his wife Janet's bed. Soon after, Alexander lost interest in life and became weak. On this day, June 29th, Alexander lay in Janet's arms. The daughter informed her mother that her father had died. Janet said sadly with tears in her eyes, This is your wish, to pass away in my arms. I love you. Wait for me. Soon we will meet again. Surprisingly, what's on the calendar for June 29, 75 years ago today? It was the day they were married. The next morning, their daughter found out. Her mother had also passed away peacefully. It turned out that their common wish was to pass away happily together in an embrace. Follow me. Get more true stories every day. Here's every character I think that's going to be in the Five Nights at Freddy's 2 movie. If you remember at the end of the movie, Abby ends up asking Mike, Hey, when are we going to go back to see my friends? I want to see them. And Mike says, You never know what's going to happen. Now, in my opinion, this movie is going to be based at least 5 to 15 years in the future. Now, hear me out. For following the plans of Five Nights at Freddy's 2 as a game, we have to go into the Withered characters. Because they've been untouched, unmaintenanced, and unloved for so long. We're going to be seeing Withered characters in Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Maybe not 15 years in the future, I may have dragged it a bit. Maybe 3 to 5 years in the future. And as you guys know, all of the Withered characters are a little bit more devious. And why are they more devious? Because these kids have been left alone for so long. They loved Abby, they loved hanging out with her. Yes, they wanted to kill her, but still. Withered Freddy, Withered Chica, look at Bonnie, she doesn't have a face. Withered Foxy, Golden Freddy. Also think 
we're going to be seeing the puppet as well, aka Mike's little brother. So hear me out. I'm going to be the first one to say it. When we get a Five Nights at Freddy's 2, we are going to get Withered characters. It's going to be based at least three to five years in the future. Just look at Withered Bonnie. Imagine Abby pulls up, getting ready to see her friends, and all of a sudden sees Bonnie. My other theory is that they are going to be pissed. They've been left alone for way too long and missed their friend. And that is what's going to drive this next movie to be absolutely insane. Like and follow for more. Yep, this nightmare is real, and planes are literally flipping over when passengers get up from their seats. A flight attendant for JetBlue had to issue an emergency announcement, making everyone realize their worst nightmares had come true on the plane. With one woman leaving a grim and dark message saying she wasn't sure if she'd ever see her grandkids again. The flight attendant asked all passengers to spread out as their weight was believed to be causing the plane to flip over, telling everyone to move to the middle of the plane. Very slowly, little by little, move towards the middle of the apron because apparently everything is like it tipped up. With a tech expert saying this was so terrifying, he described it as the plane was about to do a backflip. It felt like the, the plane was about to do a backflip. Which begs the question of how safe are these planes to begin with. Many of the passengers had rushed to the rear of the plane when deplaning, which caused this, but there's still many questions which JetBlue does not have the answers for. While no one was injured, we don't know if this is something that can happen to all planes or if it's rare. See how this fake thug reacted to a life sentence. In 2015, Jaleel Smith Riley was arrested for his involvement in a 2013 robbery that left Aaron Martin with a bullet in his head and Portia Brooks dead. Smith Riley pled guilty to the crime and was hoping to avoid a life without parole sentence. Prior to being sentenced, he cried and begged for leniency. His grandfather also spoke on his behalf. He always come by to check on me and his grandmother. He always did. He worked in the church with us all. When the judge spoke, Riley Smith didn't like what he heard. Four defendants serve a term of life without parole. As to count four, the defense of attempted murder. This heartless thug will die in prison. This is Two Girls One Cup, one of the most disgusting shock videos on the internet explained. I'm explaining this off memory and other people's comments. There is no way I watch this video again because it's that gross. The video is one minute long and as it starts you hear a piano track over the video and you see two girls making out. But at around 10 seconds in it gets absolutely sickening. One of the girls gets a glass cup and defecates in it filling it all the way to the top. A jump cut then occurs and it shows the two women licking the feces in the cup like it's ice cream. It cuts again and it shows one of the girls rubbing the feces around her mouth and the video then cuts again and it shows the two girls making out with feces in their mouth and all over their faces. The next scene, one of the girls sticks her fingers down her throat trying to make herself vomit into the glass as the other girl licks it. The next scene, it shows one of the girls standing up and the other one is on her knees. The one standing up then pukes directly onto the face of the girl on her knees. The final scene shows both girls completely covered in feces as it's even overflowing their mouths. And this is where the video finally concludes. This video is absolutely sickening and when I tell you not to watch it, don't watch it. I know I say that for all the videos I cover, but this one isn't brutal or gory. It's just plain out disgusting and you really just don't want to see it. You can watch reactions on YouTube of people watching this for the first time. Joe Rogan even has his reaction video up from years ago. Hey guys, do you remember Adam Johnson, the hockey player who suffered the fatal cut to his neck in a hockey game on October the 28th? Well, the player whose skate caused the injury has actually been arrested and charged with manslaughter. This is Matt Petgrave, probably not saying that right, but he is the player who skate caused the injury to Johnson's neck. And news out today is saying that he has been arrested and charged with the manslaughter of Adam Johnson. Now, initially I was kind of shocked at this news. And all of the footage that I saw, I did not think that it was intentional. But then when you go back and you watch the replay in slow motion, 
that kind of changes things. Apparently, the hockey world and all the hockey fans have been waiting on this to come. I'm going to add a clip in here that shows when the injury occurred during that hockey game. And you'll watch it through in regular time first. And then it will be played in slow motion. And I'm curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are. You can see it happens quickly there. But watch it in slow motion where Petgrave is in the red. He comes across and intentionally kicks that leg up, which slashes Johnson's neck and results in his death. Here's how all of the missing children from the Five Nights at Freddy's movie passed away and became the animatronics. Well, as you guys know, little backstory, these kids ended up going to Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. They all ended up disappearing in, I'm pretty sure, 1984, all because of William Afton. He wanted to run some experiments and see if he was able to combine children's souls with these animatronics. And let's just say he did his damn thing. Up first is Freddy. It is said that Freddy's original character was unalived by hiding, which kind of makes sense because you never really see Freddy doing any wild shit. I mean, you see him, but he's always kind of just like lurking or pretending to be still. Then have Foxy, said to be the soul of one of the kids that was running, hence the reason Foxy is always so fast, and always running. We also have to take into the account the kid in the orange, who has Foxy's hook, and literally starts sprinting as soon as Mike gets too close. Then have Chica, who said to have the embodiment of one of the kids that was screaming. Seems as though you always see Chica when she jump scares people in the games is she screaming, which kind of makes sense. Then have Bonnie who said to be after one of the kids that fought back. He obviously didn't win. That shows why Bonnie's always so brawlic. Then you have Golden Freddy, who said to be the souls of two children, which is supposed to be someone named Cassidy, but in the movie, it's Mike's little brother. That's the theory. Like and follow for more. Oh no. No, 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 no. I had thought that I had seen everything when it came to cults, but you are not prepared for what this cult believes. So HBO just released this documentary about the Love is One cult, which was run by this woman, Amy Carlson, who calls herself Mother God. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but she believed she was controlled by the spirit of Robin Williams and this like yassified version of St. Germain. Also, I cover a lot of dark stuff on this page so you should follow along. She also said she could channel and get advice from this like galactic federation of dead celebrities. There's like Mr. Rogers, Carrie Fisher, Steve Irwin, and randomly Donald Donald Trump who is not dead. But Robin Williams is at the top and so the cult believes they're getting a lot of advice through Robin Williams so they'll say things like So one of the beliefs that this cult has is that one day Robin Williams is going to arrive in a spaceship to take Mother God away so that she can spiritually ascend. He also told her that she can only be 103 pounds to get on the spaceship, which is why she's trying to lose a lot of weight. Eventually, Mother God starts getting sicker and sicker, and also bluer and bluer because of the colloidal silver supplements they won't stop giving her. And everyone thinks, oh my God, Robin Williams must be coming on a spaceship really soon to help Mother ascend. Eventually, she passes away, and guess what? Shockingly, Robin Williams does not descend in an intergalactic spaceship to come collect the 103 pound body of Mother God. And so the cult members just have her body. They don't know what to do with it. They thought Robin Williams was gonna come. So they hang out with it for 12 days until the police finally show up. Anyways, this whole thing is a trip. You just gotta watch it to believe it. I'm seeing photos show a 13 year old boy. Police say he murdered his mother. And before that, he's standing over her in a vulnerable position as he's getting ready to her to death. Derek Rosa snapped a selfie after the crime, his hands smeared with blood. Uh, no, I'm not her. I just have a little bit of blood on my hands. I need to know if your mom is, is breathing. She said this. Okay, and why did you do that? There's blood all over the floor. Where is your sister? Your sister's still there? She's sleeping. She's sleeping, okay. Yeah. If you mean this, what do I do if, if she wakes up? If you wake up, just let me know. I need to know. Do okay. you think we can help your mom? Miss, she's dead. I took pictures and I told my friends about it. Was that bad? You told who about it? My friends. Who did you send us pictures to? My friend. I don't know his real name because he is an online friend. I play with a lot. Cell phone video shows the moment a teenage boy surrendered with his hands up. His demeanor, he was very quiet, apolog apologetic, um, very uh, respectful. Not what you would expect uh, walking into that home and seeing that crime scene. The 13-year-old identified as Derek Rosa is currently in secure detention. When officers arrived to Unit 201 inside the Amelia Oaks apartment complex, they found the victim in her bedroom with multiple wounds just inches from her newborn baby girl. Next to her was a crib and inside of that crib a 14 day old baby that fortunately was not injured. 
places that will disappear in your lifetime. Venice, Italy is a beautiful place, but it will disappear in your lifetime. Venice is slowly sinking. The canals cause many floods, and these floods are causing Venice to tilt east. Experts say that by 2100, the city will be uninhabitable. The Great Wall of China is amazing, but it will soon be gone. One third of the wall has already been destroyed. This is mainly due to natural damage. For example, climate change. But people walking on it and local settlements stealing bricks from it has also damaged the wall badly. Experts say that within decades, the wall may be gone. San Francisco is an amazing city. It's known for earthquakes. But in 2016, geologists found something scary. They found two earthquake fault lines underneath a San Francisco Bay. This could destroy San Francisco, and there's a 75% chance this could happen before 2086. The Great Barrier Reef in Australia is one of the most amazing things in the world, but it won't be around for much longer. It's already decreased more than 50% of its original size, and lots of the vibrant colored corals are now turning white. Some believe the Great Barrier Reef may disappear by 2030. This is one of the worst true crime cases I ever covered, and this is a massive trigger warning. In 2007, the boy on the right named Gabriel Kuhn, who was 12 years old, was killed by Daniel Petri, who was 16 and on the left. Daniel Petri and Gabriel Kuhn became good friends and began playing an online role-playing game called Tibia. At one point of the game, Gabriel asked Daniel for 20,000 virtual cash to clear the stage. Gabriel borrowed money from Daniel to use in the game and then refused to pay him back. Gabriel then blocked Daniel on everything and this made him furious and he went to Gabriel's house to pay him a visit. A couple of days before the murder, Daniel called the home phone of Gabriel and his mom answered. She explained that she would be out of town and that her son would be home alone if they wanted to play, completely unaware of the boys falling out. And on August 23, 2007, Daniel went to Gabriel's house and knocked on the door. Nobody answered and Daniel kept knocking, but eventually Gabriel started speaking to Daniel through the door. Daniel told Gabriel to unlock the door and let him in, and if he apologized to him, everything would be fine. Believing this, Gabriel unlocked the door and let Daniel in. And after entering the house, Daniel locked the door behind him. Daniel then brutally assaulted Gabriel. Gabriel tried his best to defend himself, but he failed to do so. Daniel was older, bigger, and stronger. Gabriel was dripping in blood after being brutally beaten by Daniel. Daniel then laughed at the terrified Gabriel and took him to the bedroom, where he then sexually assaulted him. Gabriel cried, but this made Daniel even more cruel. After all of this, Gabriel threatened Daniel, saying he will tell his mother everything that happened, but this only made Daniel more mad. And in a fit of rage, Daniel took a cord from a gaming console and wrapped it around Gabriel's neck and strangled him with it until he went limp. Daniel assumed Gabriel was dead, and believing this, Daniel tried to move and hide the body in the crawlspace, leading to the bedrooms. However, the body was too heavy, and after realizing this, Daniel searched the house for sharp tools, and eventually he found a kitchen knife and a hacksaw. Daniel then returned to Gabriel's body, and in order to make it lighter, he took the knife and hacksaw and began cutting at the top of Daniel's leg to remove it, and as Daniel cut into Gabriel's leg, he woke up. Gabriel wasn't dead. He let out a blood curling scream, but Daniel restrained him, making sure to twist and turn the blade to make it even more painful. Eventually, Daniel dismembered his right leg and moved to his left. And after severing both of his legs, Gabriel passed away. His autopsy suggested he was still alive throughout the whole ordeal and he eventually died from shock and blood loss. After Daniel finished the dismemberment, he tried to hide the body again and he wrapped a cable and wire around Gabriel's body. But the body was still too heavy and Daniel then fled the house. Gabriel's body was discovered by his brother and the body was left by the hallway door and the legs and the hacksaw too. Daniel Petri was admitted to a juvenile center in September 2007 to only three years. This is due to Brazil's laws of sentencing minors. And to make you realize how evil Daniel was, when the judge asked him if he had any last words of remorse, Daniel said this, Gabriel was a coward and a thief. He burns in hell right now where I sent him. And when I die, I will find him in hell and finish my revenge. 
It's also worth saying that the photos of the crime and Gabriel's body have surfaced on the internet and nobody knows how they got there. I highly recommend not to look at them due to the graphic nature of them and they would definitely be the worst crime scene photos you will ever see. It's honestly insane how Daniel is walking free today. May Gabriel rest in peace. This is a case of 19 year old Alexi Treviso and how she went to the hospital complaining of back pain but ended up getting charged with murder. Alexi Treviso was a 19 year old senior in high school living in Artesia, New Mexico. She was on the varsity cheerleading team and she was dating her boyfriend Devin for about two years. Honestly, Alexi just seemed like a typical teenage girl. Her prom was coming up soon, her graduation was around the corner, and she was already thinking about what university she was going to go to in the fall. January 26, 2023, that day was pretty much just like any other day for 19-year-old Alexi. She went to cheerleading practice that day and got home in the afternoon. She spent some time with her family and then she went to bed. However, she was woken up in the middle of the night with severe back pain. This was like not normal back pain, like Alexi was in so much pain that her mother decided to take her to the hospital. Alexi and her mother Rosa arrived at the Artesia General Hospital in the early morning hours of January 27th. Alexi checked in and told the doctors that she had really bad pain in her back, so they wanted to do a test to see if maybe she had a UTI or a kidney infection, since back pain can be a symptom of both of those things. So they're getting ready to do those tests, and then they ask Alexi, are you pregnant? Which is a very common thing to ask. I mean, if you're a girl and you've gone to the doctor before, I feel like they always ask you if you're pregnant. On top of that, experiencing back pain can be a symptom of pregnancy. So the doctor asks Alexi, are you pregnant? And she says no, that she's still a virgin and that she hasn't engaged in any sexual activity. So the doctor's like, okay, perfect. And they send Alexi over to go get a CAT scan done so that they can check for kidney stones. And while she's getting that test done, the doctors decide to still do a pregnancy test just in case because you never know. So they did a urine test and when the results came back, they were positive. Alexi was pregnant. Now, of course, pregnancy tests can sometimes be inaccurate, so the doctors wanted to check her blood just to make sure that she was actually pregnant. And while all of this is going on, Alexi tells the doctors that she needs to go to the bathroom. Like she has to go number two and it's coming out like right now. So she gets up from the hospital bed and she literally runs to the bathroom holding her butt because she feels like it's going to come out. She locks herself inside the bathroom and she's in there for quite some time. Doctors and the staff at the hospital are getting kind of worried because she's been in there for a while and they know that she's pregnant. So they're thinking maybe she's having some type of miscarriage or something else is happening. They knock on the door, but Alexi refuses to come out. At one point, her mother Rosa also goes over to knock on the door, but Alexi says that she's just having trouble going number two and that she'll be out shortly. At this point, Alexi has been in the bathroom for more than like 20 minutes, so the doctors tell her, if you don't open the door right now, we're going to unlock it. Before the doctor can unlock the door, Alexi just opens up and starts walking back to her room. One of the doctors looks inside the bathroom just to see, you know, what happened, and they do see that there was all over the floor. They asked Alexi, what's going on? And she said that she simply got her period. They call over the cleaning lady to come clean up the bathroom, and when she starts to take out the trash, notices that the trash bag feels heavier than usual. So Leela, the housekeeper, goes to look inside the garbage bin, and when she pulls out a bag, she finds a baby. The baby was inside a clear plastic bag at the bottom of the bin. Okay, more in part two. Never wake what? up a sleepwalker. <laughs> <laughs> This girl was freaking out when her sister got out of bed and started sleepwalking. Stop staring at me like that. Alexis! Mom! Mom! She's just standing here staring at me. Relax. Hey. Okay. Hey, go lay down. <sighs> Follow for more.